In 2019, we moved out to our very own farm. We got a farm! Over the past four and a half years, we have built coops for animals and started milking cows. We even built a greenhouse and garden and started keeping bees. Almost done, Dad, almost done. Today, we're gonna do something we haven't done in a long time. Show you how many animals we have. They always poop when you hold them. And check in on the bees and future aviary space. And we might just find some surprises along the way. Two more. Hey, Joey. Hey there. So we have not given you a full farm tour in a long time and we want to show you where everyone's at, how everyone's doing. We're going to start off here with the cats at the cat house. We've got Bolton here. There's Bear. Here's Tiger. And here is Cookie. Hey, no Cookie. Now I need to get some food for Joey out and we've just started feeding her some new stuff because of course she's a dog, she'll eat anything. But anything doesn't necessarily mean healthy. But what if dogs ate real food? Feed your dog the farmer's dog. It's real, fresh, healthy food with whole meat and veggies, gently cooked in human grade kitchens to preserve their nutritional value. Just tell them about your dog and they'll deliver personalized, vet developed recipes for as little as $2 a day. And the meals arrived in pre portioned, ready to serve packs, conveniently delivered on your schedule. And it's really simple each day. I just grab a new pack out of the freezer, set it in the fridge, and then I mix it into a container so it's ready to go for the next morning. Dog people all across the country have ordered millions of meals from the farmer's dog. And it's never been easier to invest in your dog's health with fresh food. Here's Joey's house right here. I usually feed her right and say, oh, you guys are gonna eat his food, no. Here's Joey's house right here, okay. You're not gonna wait for me to put it in there? Look how good that food is, oh my goodness. So get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy dog food by clicking my link. Plus you get free shipping. Just click the link down in the description. <laughs> Let's go milk the cow. Good morning. Good morning. So what feed do we have over here for the cows? Alfalfa pellets. And this is a dairy feed mix. It's like a sweet feed. It has uh, molasses and stuff in it. <laughs> Looks good. And we have our mineral here. Since we have the machine and the feed all ready, we're ready to bring Dolly in. Then we'll bring in the other cows just so we can feed them in here and get them used to the station. We'll separate Dolly every other day. So that way she'll hold in more milk. Otherwise, Poppy will take all of her milk and then we won't have as much the next day. So separate her for a full day and usually we'll get a gallon and a half to sometimes two gallons lately. And then I've got our Molasti milk machine working well here. So I'll get that turned on and we'll start milking down. Dolly out. She wants her milk, but we've got to get her over here first. Uh -uh. And Poppy got her head collar off yesterday, her harness. And we don't necessarily need to have it on her. We had it on Dolly at one point, we had it on Maisie. Eventually, we have to adjust it and it's difficult but she kept finding a way to get it off even when we had it tight on her so somewhere it's over under the hay somewhere we'll have to find it two oh yeah we've been getting two gallons a day for about a week yeah it's a lot I 
And this, of course, is Paisley. She's about three, three and a half months old right now. She is Maisie's calf, and she's doing really well. You can still see her little ghost spot on the back. We're unsure if Maisie's producing enough milk for her. I do see her try to drink from Maisie from time to time, but she's already starting to transition to, to hay and some of the feed snacks we give her. So and we tried to milk Maisie for about the first month or two, and she put up quite a fight for the first month, and then we were able to, to actually milk, but then we got almost no milk from her. We heard some people say that cows would produce more on their on their second calf. So we're hoping that's true, but so far she hasn't produced any milk for us. And then the last thing to do in the cow area is to turn their water on and just top off this bucket right here for them to drink out of. I'd love to do an automatic water sometime this year in the middle of their their area so it just puts a little bit of water because this has to fill up entirely for them to be able to get it but this is so much simpler than we had it in the past when we had to haul out three different trips of five gallon buckets it would take about an hour or so to fill up their water every week so in the fall we built this shed and attached run for the six he fowl, there's four peacocks and two peahens in here. So they have this 10 by 10 run here where they're able to get on the perches, which they are a lot of times. Sometimes they're starting to do their show, getting ready for spring, for breeding. We've got this opening right here and they all fit through that. I was afraid they'd get too big, but they fit through that just perfectly. And then inside there, they've got their perch. They can come in here whenever it's cold, windy. Come here, Bella. And they've done wonderful here in winter. It's kept them out of all the elements, and the roof has done just fine with the snow that we've gotten so far. It's been able to brace it really well, so we haven't had any issues with collapse or weight on top of here. That's good. So we're gonna add up all of our chickens that we have in here to take a little bit of an inventory going into spring. So in here we've got seven I am Chimani's, and then here we've got four roosters. Yeah, so in here there are two hens and five roosters. They're a couple months old, maybe four to six weeks. We can let them outside. We just gotta make sure they don't squeeze outside the fence so we lose them. So we're trying to protect them. So for now, we're safe with keeping them in here and then we'll eventually let them out in this run if we move the rooster somewhere else. I think we should just keep the two hens and one to two roosters that we like, just keep them in here and probably move the roosters out. So that way you're protected. So that would be three roosters, the one with the white. Okay. Here, go ahead and close the door. I'm gonna pick them out. So this guy got way too much white. He's gonna go with another flock. There you go. He looks really good. I think I'm gonna keep him in here. Coloring is all black. I just wanna see a little bit of purple color under here, back in here. I think I'll take him out for now. And then same here, same here. I see a little bit of reddish color back here, so he can go as well. So now we've got it down to two hens, two roosters. So I'd like that for now. Eventually we'll just probably just have one rooster here unless we had a lot more hens. Anybody needs a rooster. We have overabundance of roosters. So if anybody wants one, come get it. It's for free. So in here we have Bruce Fighter and then some all bigger mixes. That's a Moran's Americana mix and then two cream leg bar mixes with maybe Americana or something else. Okay, water. So in this rooster flock, we have two Olivegar mixed roosters and three Indio Gante roosters. Not sure if we can use these guys in with the Indio Gantes because I've got a rooster that I really like over in the next group. That puts our chicken total up to 16. So this is our youngest grow out flock. We've kept them in here most of winter. Now we're starting to let them out during the day. How many you got there? Three. Three. So 
So it was nine and three. So we have nine over in this one. We have those three roosters. For now, we're just putting them in this little coop here so they get used to each other and then we'll let them all be together. So this guy has been my favorite Indio Gante rooster. He's very colorful, different than most of our others. And he's been really friendly too. He's a little scared of me, but he's really friendly when I come up with the feed bucket or the water. He'll come right up and eat it right out of my hand. Here in a few months, I have, I think I'll have this guy take over as head of the Indio Gante flock. And that's who we're gonna go see next in a minute. And that's my favorite one in here. She's a Splash Americana. Reminds me an awful lot of Amber. Oh. We're here in the Indio Gante flock. These are the world's tallest chicken breed. We've got one rooster and six hens in here, so we have a total of seven. The hens are all great. The rooster is a little iffy for me, a little aggressive at times. Of course, some people have noticed that he lost some of his toes last year during the, the frostbite, the really cold part of February last year. And so we'll probably replace him with that colorful rooster from this flock here in the next couple months. We've been getting eggs from these guys every day. And every time I get 10 or 12, I'll list them on eBay each week. I'll have a link to that down in our description. So next to the Indio Gante flock, we have our duck coop. We keep a couple roosters in with them. And we've got our pheasants that we hatched out last year. So over here with our ducks and roosters, we've got seven ducks and four roosters, including the turkin. He's a pretty cool guy. Now these pheasants, we have these available if you're ever interested in getting a pair. We have eight in here. We have three males and five females. So we could sell three pairs out of here. Males will be fully colored here in the next couple months and they'll start laying eggs here this spring. Now with these ducks, we used to keep them down at the pond, but we were having issues with them not coming in at night and then predators getting. We were having owls and hawks that were picking them off from the pond. So now we've kept them up here and we've had no issues with them. And roosters, is kind of an overflow area for a few more roosters. We're probably gonna have to deal with this here this spring and lessen this, the number of roosters we have around the farm. In this area we have our bantam flock. We used to keep all of our chickens together for the first year and then we started having issues with the bigger chickens beating up on Silkies, Polish at our old place. So we decided to separate out all of the smaller chickens. Bantam is just a small chicken and so we have them all over here. We've got our Polish, Egyptian Fayumi, Fabio, the Frizzle. We've got Dove, our oldest chicken, a Japanese white black-tailed bantam. We've got a few red cochins in here. And this is Butter. She's our cross beak. She's lived for a really long time. Sometimes cross beaks, they're, they're born like this with their beak like this. You can trim it so it can close properly. We need to do a trim sometime here because it just keeps on growing. And so we've had her for quite a long time. She's done really well. Cross beaks have a problem where their upper beak will grow long, the lower beak will keep growing out. And so they don't meet up. And so it doesn't naturally trim. And so you've got to trim it. Otherwise it'll get so long that they won't be able to properly close their beak. And then they'll have a problem eating and drinking. In the Bantam flock we have 16, and then over here we have our turkeys and our chamois Spitzalbin rooster. And so that's another one. So, so far before the main flock, that puts us at 53 chickens. We've had female turkeys before, but we had Lurky. She got caught in the fence once when they were fighting. And then we've had another hen last year that ended up getting killed by a predator early in the year, like right about this time, February, March last year. So now we're down to two toms, and so we'll see if we add some more female turkeys this year. And then check out this feeder here today. We have got a bunch of bees on it. Since it's been unseasonably warm this February, the bees are coming out and there's nothing blooming yet. So they're getting on all of the powder and I think they're packing it away and taking it back as basically as pollen to start working on their hive right now, give them something to eat. And so they're all over this chicken feed trying to get whatever they can off of it to take back to their hive. So here at the main flock, we've got our coop that we built end of 2019, beginning of 2020, that's mobile, has automatic water coming off the rainwater. We've got solar on it for lights inside and outside. We've got automatic feeder. We've got nest boxes we can open up. We've got an automatic door on it. So it's been very useful. So we've done a couple counts of them. We believe we have 47 here in the main flock. Who's this? Sammy. Sammy? Okay. Is this your favorite chicken? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what breed she is? I think it's a salmon freckle. That's 
That's right, it's a salmon favorel. So Sammy the salmon favorel. <laughs> and there's somebody. So this last area, we just moved the chicken tractors over because they've been on the same spot for a while since it was snow out here and we couldn't move them. We've got a couple roosters right here. A couple of these are our coops that'll go into the aviary. The two pairs of mandarin ducks right here, our red golden pheasants right here, and then we have four pairs of breeders of mandarin ducks right here that'll go into the aviary. So these first two pairs, they're from ones we hatched out last year. We'll sell them or we'll just hatch out their eggs and we'll end up selling the eggs if somebody's interested in them. What's in here? What's in this coop? Red golden pheasants. That's right. So in here we have Blaze and we have four female red golden pheasants and all these guys will move into the aviary when we have that completed this spring and we are really excited to see them fly around in there. It's going to be so much fun. Blaze is fully feathered out, fully colored. He loses all his feathers in the fall. He has a molt in the fall and then he grows them back in the late winter, just like the, the peacocks do. And so he'll be ready to breed here in the next month or so and they'll start laying eggs. And then we've got our mandarin breeders in here. We've got three standard pairs and one white pair, airmail and salt, and then our three standard pairs. So we're gonna switch out their food and water. And these guys, this is why we built the aviary pond was for them. So we are really excited for them to get to use it here pretty soon. So we've had this horse barn up and running for the past, I guess since August, that's when we first brought home Holiday. And so we've got Holiday and Sterling and a couple of the stalls here. We're still looking to add maybe one or two more horses. Hey Holiday. Horses come in in the morning and then the evening. Just get a little snack, we'll brush them, check their feet. And Sterling is often a tricky one. He'll hang out out here. So Jake and I have been taking horse riding lessons been very helpful since we've never been really properly trained on horses and the psychology of horse it's very interesting it's really different than what you would think I've been enjoying I think Jake's been enjoying it <laughs> yes of course is it fun to learn all about the equipment and how to ride the horses yeah or? it is it's very interesting why one bridle is different than the other and why you would use one or the other one. Very interesting. That's Holiday up. likes to roll around in the mud. She is, she prefers to be dirty. Sterling's different. You barely have to brush him every day, but Holiday, if she finds a mud hole, she likes to roll around in it. So, gotta keep her clean. So, so while we love this really warm weather in February, this is usually when it's the coldest time of the year. Usually it's zero to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. We have flies in the window here. That is no bueno. We are gonna have big fly issues if we don't have another freeze or two before we get to spring. So in this quail shed or chick brooder shed, this is where we keep some of our sick chickens over time. We haven't shown it a ton, but occasionally we've shown raising our pea chicks over in here. We've got our button quail in here and we do occasionally sell some of those eggs. And then we've got our chick brooder right here. We've got those five mong chickens that are now about three weeks old. And look at the coloring on that one. You can tell there's gonna be some good white speckles coming through on the dark color. And they are starting to look a lot more similar when at the beginning you definitely saw some browns and blacks and a lighter color. So now they're getting a lot more similar in appearance. All right, these are our button quail. We've had them several years now. They lay these really tiny eggs. And when they hatch out, they're just so tiny. It's, they're fully feathered. They're so cute. So these are the button quail eggs. This is a regular chicken egg in comparison. Very easy to keep. They stay in the barn but you probably have them outside during the summer. They do not like cold weather though. So you have to be careful. You have to keep a heat lamp on them during the winter. Now it is mega windy today, but we're over here by our, we've got our, our pea fowl right here, Blue and Bell's offspring, and they are, they are getting pretty huge. I think we could probably merge them in with the six peacocks over in the other coop. And then we've got our pigeons up here. 
We've got four of them. We've got two of the homing pigeons and we've got two of the, the German owl pigeons. And at one point we opened their doors and then they swapped partners and they're all males, but they just wanted to be with a different buddy. So we've got two of these guys, Blue and Bell's offspring, and we think they're both peacocks. So, ah! They always poop when you hold them. So really pretty. Not sure what the ultimate plan with them is, but we'll probably end up either just selling these peacocks or maybe let them free range later on or something. But you know what? Let's go ahead and go for it. In there, it's gonna be a lot of peacocks in with two peahens. So that one's definitely a peacock. This one could be a peahen. Yeah, she's a little bit. Different coloring. Browner colors on yeah. our feathers. So we might have a, a pair here. If anybody's ever interested in these guys, let us know, but not sure what we'll do with them. Let's put a leg band. We'll put a leg band on them. So we put some bands on them just in case we can't recognize that they are the children of Blue and Bell. We want to know who they are and when we put them in the group. So A little skinnier band that we can recognize, but in case that gets broken, we've got a backup with a bigger zip tie. Everybody's in here. Blue and Bell, get to meet your kids again. <laughs> For the first time. Yeah. We, we incubate them, so they've never come out. So these two have been in the breeder and then in a little shelter kept above the ground because the last couple years we've had our peafowl die when they've gotten parasites in their bodies from being on the ground or being with chickens. So for the first four months we've kept them above the ground and it's kept everyone healthy and alive this year. Our white peafowl and then these two that hatched a few months later. So I imagine just like chickens these guys are going to fight for pecking order a little bit. So we'll definitely monitor and make sure they're okay because they're quite a bit smaller, but hopefully they'll all be friends together. When they get the aviary done, we'll move Blue and Bell in and one of the white peafowl pair. Can't move them all in there, just be too crowded. And we want to make sure that the pairs we have in there are pairs that we want to breed for future generations. There's Piper, he's the pied peacock. Three whites, we've got two males and one female right there, that lower one. And then we've got Blue and Bell are peacock and peahen. And they're the parents of these two. A little windy. Yeah? So Cashew and Bamboo are in here and we have never gotten eggs from Cashew. She's never laid. We keep checking. We haven't found any. So we don't know what's up with her. She's same age as Peekaboo, so she should be laying eggs, but she has not. got two more eggs. She finally laid. I thought she was done because it's been... It's been almost a month. Almost a month and she laid another one. So we got two more. They're not sitting on them though. You gonna sit on them? You see them? You gonna go sit on them? Checking them? So we've seen signs where they may be breeding. We haven't actually seen breeding, but we've seen where they're getting close to figuring it out. So it's possible they are, and we just haven't seen it. So these are eggs number 13 and 14. So the first five eggs, we left them out here. They end up freezing when it got really cold at the beginning of January. Hey, the next six we took inside and we have them in the incubator. They've got about a month left until they might hatch if they were fertile. And then we had one more that, that was out here that cracked. We didn't get to it in time. So there's been 12 eggs. This is number 13 and 14. I think we're gonna take these two inside and I'm gonna incubate them just in case they are fertile. And then future ones beyond that, I'll let them take care of and see if they can hatch them out if they are actually breeding. There's the mama, there's peekaboo. Yeah, they're definitely being protective over these two eggs, both mom and dad here. Since they're wanting to protect them, Becky thought we'll just take one and then we'll leave them the rest and see what they do. But we'll find out. We'll put this in the incubator first. So we just put a zip tie on one of the white emus males because we can't ever keep them apart so we're gonna name him her Bert and the other one's Ernie so here's Ernie now we'll be able to tell apart as long as they don't break it off yeah. they're pretty strong so we're out here at the beehives and I am not usually used to working out with the bees in February. Usually we don't start working with them till March because they're just, it's too cold. They stay in their hives, but it is above 50 degrees and it's been for a few weeks now. And so we're having to feed them. We're feeding them at their hives with some pollen patties and we're feeding them a sugar water mix out here. And we've got four different types of hives. We've got our light stroth, our, our typical box hives. We've got our 
horizontal hives are layens hives, and then we have our, our flow hives. Those are also a Langstroth type of hive, but then they have the special flow super, so you can harvest honey right at the hive. And then we have our round and transparent ivory bee hive, and we have got quite a few hives that are doing really well that are alive. I know I've I've lost a few, and I'll get them to them here pretty soon, but we're just making sure that we're getting them some food because the problem we've had the last few years is bees dying out in March when they didn't have anything to bring in, and so I'm learning to, to supplement their feed. We have a total of 17 hives. I think I can see activity from all but about three or four, so if I have 13, 14 hives. I'm gonna be really excited for this year. We'll be able to do some splits in the next month or two and be able to multiply our hives that much more and produce that much more honey. So I'm out at the aviary. We're at, on a little walk with the horses. And I don't want to spend too much time out here right now. I know you guys are excited to see all of the birds out here when we get this completed. We've been waiting till spring here to finish up getting the netting. Maybe in the next couple of weeks, if the weather stays this nice, I can start to rent the equipment to be able to get that completed so we can start doing the finishing touches to make sure the birds can't get out of here and that predators don't come in. So this place is gorgeous. We're really excited about it and hopefully we can finish it up soon. Well, I hope you had fun on our tour and I know it was a little longer than our normal video. So thank you for bearing with us. And I wanted to give you totals for our birds, our animals, in case you were curious since I was counting earlier on and I didn't tell you the final number on our chickens. We have 101 adult chickens. We've got five chicks, the mong chickens. So we've got a total of 106 currently. And then we've got 13 pheasants. We've got 12 mandarins. We've got 11 button quail. We now have eight peafowl. We have seven ducks, we have four pigeons, two turkeys, we have our four Jersey cows, we have our two horses, we have four cats, and we have one dog named Joey. We'll see you guys next time.